In this video, I want to talk about Kelly's covariation theory. Uh, it's a simple theory, but when you look at it, like when you look at this diagram, you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be complicated. But let's start off with the name covariation. Uh, covariation is a term you're probably not familiar with. It's really a statistical term, and we won't get into how you measure covariance. But think about, let's break it down to root word. The, the basic word of covariation is vary. So think about if something varies. It means that it, it, it's not always the same. So like um, if the reason um, a student is late to class varies, that basically means that it's not always the same reason why they're late to class. Now we know when we put the prefix co in front of a word, it means with. And so covariation means that there's, there's more than one variable that exists at a time. So in other words, think about what the word vary means. It, it could be something different, but with covariation, it's basically saying that there's two or more things going on. And that's where the name comes from. Like I said, it's an unusual name unless you're familiar with statistics. And at this level, you won't really get uh, familiar with the term covariation in terms of statistics unless you become a psych major and uh, take some statistics courses. And in case you're wondering, if you want to be a psych major, you do have to take at least one statistics course um, during your undergraduate career. And it's not as bad as you might think, because to be quite honest, statistics isn't any more complicated than algebra. Statistics basically is algebra. Let's look at covariation. So think about Kelly was trying to basically argue that people act like scientists and they're trying to figure out a reason why a behavior happens. And that makes sense because you think about that is what we're doing with attributions. Let's look at um, Kelly argues there's three covariations. So in other words, if it helps, think about three factors that you have that come into play when you make an attribution. The first one we're going to look at is consensus. So by consensus, we're looking at how does this person's behavior compare to other people in the same situation? In other words, do most people, it's like we see if, it, if covariation is high, or sorry, if consensus is high, most people do this. So think about um, a good example. You, you get into an elevator. Most people get into the elevator and they look forward. They don't look at other people. So if some if, if someone gets into an elevator and this looks straight ahead at the door or the lights or so forth, then that would be high consensus because they're doing what most people do. Now, if they get into the elevator and they look at the back wall or look at you, uh, that's low consensus. Most people don't do that. So we're looking here with consensus. Um, how does it, that person's behavior compare to other people? Next, we can look at consistency, and we can say, well, how, how does this person um, behave when we look at different situations? So in other words, like, um, is this how the person always behaves? So if they, if they are, um, then consensus, or sorry, consistency is high. And if they don't, if they don't behave like that, then consistency is pretty low. Think about, as an example, someone's, um, oh, this is the way that they're kind of, I don't want to say personality, but think about the way they behave when you see them. So the person is generally happy, regardless of the situation, then we'd have high consistency, right? That they're, they're typically happy in a variety of situations. But if, let's say, one day they seem kind of um, grouchy and not um, happy. Well, then we'd say consistency is low because they don't usually behave that way. Most of the time, they're kind of happy and cheerful. Then the final um, factor we can look at is distinctiveness. And this is looking at the person's behavior over time. How do they be? So here, instead of looking at different situations, we're looking at the same situation or things that are similar. So for example, <clears throat> if, 
if a person is usually very um, serious at work and doesn't really joke around um, <coughs> and then anything related to work they're very serious about their work we'd say that's high distinct um, sorry that's um, low cons um, Sorry, that would be low con low distinctiveness. So in other words, it's not unusual. So what we're looking at with um, distinctiveness is kind of unusualness in similar situations. So if a person is acting serious at work in any kind of work-related events or anything related to that, well, then that's low distinctiveness. But if they're kind of um, acting kind of silly or um, um, joking around at work, well, that's high distinctiveness cause like that's not usual for them uh, and so you might think you might make a different different attribution so again think about like maybe someone you're working with they're typically very conscientious and hardworking and then all of a sudden one day they just don't seem like they care about work well that's high distinctiveness because that's not typical you would think wait a minute that doesn't make sense uh, they're usually not they're usually very um, hardworking and taking their work seriously. And if they don't, you might think something's different. And so what Kelly's arguing is that we use each of these factors to help us determine an attribution. So when we make that internal or external attribution, that's what we're doing. So let's look through, I have this, ex these exa this example in your notes. I just thought it kind of helped you work through it. So here we have a behavior. Your dad is rude to your friend Chris. So Kelly would argue, in order to, to for us to figure out why is your dad rude to Chris, so again, we're making an at attribution. We're trying to explain this behavior of your dad's. We could look at consensus. And so let's say you decide that consensus is low because most people, um, like Chris and so the fact that your dad doesn't he's not fitting in with the norm and so that's low consensus he's not doing what most people do and then for consistency well we can say that every time your dad's around Chris he behaves this way that he's not very nice to Chris so we have a lot of consistency now distinctiveness looking at how unusual for it it, it how unusual this is in this case, we let's say it's low distinctiveness, that your dad is usually um, rude to you, um, all your friends. So therefore, uh, this is not unusual for your dad. So we have a low distinctiveness, not unusual. Therefore, you might conclude that you might make an internal attribution and you just say your dad's just um, a grouchy person. Now you could also make it, I mean, it, there isn't just one attribution you make. You could also make an internal attribution that your dad just doesn't like your friends. Or uh, So this is one explanation. So let's take another example using the same situation. In this case, we're going to say that consensus is high. That your, your dad doesn't seem to like your friend Chris because he's rude to him. But most people don't like your friend Chris. Maybe you're the exception. You're the one, one of the few people that likes Chris. And let's say also in this situation that consistency is high, that your dad is always rude to Chris. So we got the same thing there, high consistency. But let's say in this time, in this situation, we have high distinctiveness. In other words, when looking at your other friends, your dad's usually fine to your other friends. He's not rude to any of them. So this is kind of unusual for um, your dad to behave this way. So in this case you might make an external attribution and say this it's not about your dad or who your dad is or anything about his character or personality. It's Chris that people just don't like Chris. Let's look at another attribution. So again what I'm trying to do with these examples that help you think about um, there isn't always just one attribution people make and that uh, Kelly has a good point in that people do go through a variety of these type of things. 
So in this case, let's say, once again, that consensus is low, that most people do like um, Chris, and the fact that your dad doesn't seem to, that's um, not typical. Let's also say in this case that consistency is low. So your dad is usually nice to Chris. So this time the fact that he's being rude to Chris is not consistent with his usual behavior towards Chris. So again, consistency is looking at similar, either the same situation or similar. And so we're, since we're talking about his interactions with Chris, we'll say that consistency is low in this case because he's usually nice to Chris. We'll also say um, we, that we have high distinctiveness because dad, your dad is usually nice to most of his, um, or should I rephrase that, that your dad is never rude to your other friends. So he's typically nice to all your friends. And he's also, if you look at it again, go back to consistency, he's usually nice to Chris. So therefore, um, this is a very distinctive case. And um, we see it, so we're thinking something's out of character here. This is, so we might make what um, Kelly would call a temporary attribution. And don't worry so much about that term. It's just the idea that what we're saying is your explanation for this behavior um, is very situational. Well, I guess that doesn't have to be situational. You could say your dad's having, well, no, I guess it would be. You, you could conclude your dad's having a bad day, which would be more about the situation as opposed to your dad's personality or character. Or you might say Chris did something. And so therefore, that again, it could be something that this is unusual. And so it's more situational, something about what Chris did. Now why Chris might have done that, that might lead to another whole set of attributions for you to kind of figure out. So I hope this explanation and this example helps you understand this model. Again, the key thing is that there's several factors that come into play and looking at <coughs> excuse me, how this um, relates to the attributions you make.